Okay, we lit it just like a fuse, so no need to pick and choose Welcome to 2020, where we do more than interviews The hottest be coming through, dropping knowledge on all of you Get a peek at the front of you with the truth that they offer you Yeah, hands up, we doing it for the culture To give artists and businesses more exposure Keep it real and stay silent just like a boulder It's about to go all the way down, can't get no lower Chasing my dreams, know that they get no slower But if I stay running, I promise they getting closer More over success, my older And if you're sleeping on me, I'm waking them up like bulges I told you, coming from the land with the tide roll Well, we'll be on a whole different vibe though We like to ride slow and keep our windows clean So you really can see us like Stevie Wonder Waking up with his eyes closed, yeah Got the kind of flow that rock the boat On my 16s and pounds of dope And if you figure you can hang with me on the mic Then grab some rope Matter of fact, better grab some hope While you at it, we keep it live, it's time to tune in Turn up the sound on what you use in. It goes so hard, I think it's bruising. The show is 2020, no need to zoom in. Yeah. Thank you for tuning into another episode of the Business Minute. I'm your host, sir. And today I'm joined with a special guest. Uh, we're not even sure what name to call her just yet, <laughs> but the Mulatto Queen. Um, herself has come down to 2020 Studios. That's what I like to call my apartment. Um, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's all good right. to be here. All right. All right. Now, um, we've obviously had a bit of a conversation beforehand. And so uh, if you don't mind reiterating, what is it that you do? I am. I do a lot. I'm, I'm a lot. <laughs> hey. I have Mulatto Queen products, which mm -hmm. is um, organic um, plant based hair mostly skincare i got a, a little bit of hair stuff like a beard oil and some shampoo but most of my stuff is for skin like mm -hmm. i have different skin scrubs oils creams body butters um i am also a youtuber um and i do tarot cards and i'm a certified life and wellness coach and i'm a certified reiki master and i'm a homeschool mom and I'm a wife. <laughs> like, I got a lot of things going on. All right. Well, um, again, this was, I won't say impromptu, but we, we got in contact. We set this up and you came all the way down here, you know, took time out your day. And uh, we had a little bit of a deep conversation. So I just, just to revisit the previous conversation we had again, for those who, who missed it, um, what kind of inspired you to follow your own path? Um, I have a few different inspirations, actually. Um, one is my kids, you know, everything I do is for them to better their future, to give them everything that I wish I had. Mm. Um, um, everything that I needed and didn't even know I needed, you know, until I got older. So um, another one of my inspirations is my sister that passed away um, in 2013. I'm sorry. Um, that inspired me. You know, she was always a go-getter. You know, like she was always the type of, she was a single mom that made shit happen. Like mm. she just, she was the type of mom that you hear, you know, make a meal out of no meal. You know, okay. made a dollar out of 15 cents. <laughs> right. You know, that was her. And she was a rock. You know, she was our mother figure, you know, and it was seven of us, mm. you know. Um, but when she passed, I, it hurt me, you know. But then it was like, I remembered, you know, like, oh, I got, I got to do this. I got to do this because just because I can't see her anymore doesn't mean she ain't here. Like, I can hear her. Like, boo, that's what she called me. Like, boo, you better get your shit together. Like, what you doing? <laughs> you know, you need to tighten up. You got babies. You know, like, I don't see her, but I can hear her. Right. You know, so that was an inspiration of mine as well. Hmm. Okay. And how long have you been doing, uh, well, as far as YouTube, your skincare product line? Like, um, how long has it been going? I started, I, I made a hair care product first okay. in 2016. My middle child, she was five at the time. She had got some type of scalpel, scalp fungus, and it made her hair fall out. No. And I took her, we took her to doctors, you know, and they was like, try this, try this, try this. And nothing was working. And then that made her sad, 
you know, like she was, she got real self-conscious about, you know, people seeing that, right. you know, and she's only five and I'm like, all she got is me. I, I got to make this better, me, because I'm going to all these outside people and ain't nobody doing nothing. They're just treating my baby like a science experiment, you know, let's try this, let's try this. I'm going to try something, you know. So I started doing my own research on um, herbs and plants. And I came up with my own oil for hair. Okay. And I started using that. And it was like her scalp, it was like a bad infection. You know, like it was like scaly and like pus, you know. And it was like I started using that oil. And like three days later, the redness and the swelling had went down. Wow. You know, I kept using it every day. I would, you know, rub her scalp. And a couple more days went by and it's like, it just, you know, started clearing up. It was just getting better and better and better. And then hair started growing back. Now she, she's got locks, head full of hair, you know. And it's like, I did that. Mm. And a couple of people, you know, that knew about was, you know, asked like, what happened? You know, was it this? You know, how did your, how did you get her hair? And then I told him what I did. And one lady was like, you need to bottle it up and sell it. You know how many people out here losing their hair don't that's know true. what to do? So um, that's what started it with the with the hair. And I got and then I had made a shampoo as well. Word. And like I said, and then I don't know. I, I don't know what it was. I just I was more into skin. You know, like me personally, more into skin. So I started doing more skin care products instead right. of hair, besides the shampoo and oil. And I do still make that. Um, Mulatto's Almond Serum is what I call it. And it's available on my website if anybody want to buy some. Mm. <laughs> Yo, that sounds good. I'm like, dang, I'm thinning a little bit up here. I might need to hit you up real quick. Shoot. Got any in the car or anything? Because I'll buy it from you. I actually, well, I do have a... Um, a beard oil and wash set in my car. Somebody ordered it, so I had it so I could give it to them. But it's a long story. They're not getting it anymore. I will gladly buy it from you <laughs> as soon as this interview is over. Okay. I kid you not. Because oh. <laughs> I'm out of beard, you know. But anyway, we'll get into that. Um, wow, that's, that's kind of cool. So your drive, it was like, it wasn't that you allowed anything to stop you. Right. You know, you took your interest and the circumstance and you made it happen. Yes. You know, kind of like your sister, you know. Yeah. That's that's really dope, yo. Man. Thank you. Talk about inspirations. All <laughs> right. Um, so along this path of over the last few years of, you know, doing business, we talked about earlier that, you know, you could you you wear many hats, you know, being mom, staying at home, teaching, doing everything. Um, were there any like. I guess life lessons or any obstacles that you encountered in business getting to this point? Yes, a lot actually in the <laughs> beginning because um, it's an Aquarius thing, but we're kind of unorganized. Yes, y'all we, are. <laughs> <laughs> we're unorganized, we're late, we mm. can't never be on time. So it's like in the beginning, my house was chaos, you know? wasn't nothing I didn't have any specific order you know for anything we just was freestyling our life me okay. and all the kids we just freestyling <laughs> our life didn't have any type of order and I wanted to get some order and I went about it the wrong way because you know I homeschool my kids because I don't like school environment mm -hmm. but I was so caught up in getting things in order that I turned my living room into a classroom and mm. and that didn't work for us, you know, because I'm an out of the box type person. Right. My kids are out of the box kids. And then it's like, mom, this is just like school, you know, like <laughs> mm. what is, what you got going on? We don't like this, you know. So it's like, y'all right. You are right. right. That's exactly what I did. I didn't turn this into a real school. And that was one of the whole reasons for not being in school, you right. know, because we like our freedom and our opportunity to be creative and freestyle, you know. So it was like I had to get out of that and start over again, you know. And then with 
you know, with cooking and cleaning and all of that, you know, it's like I'm in the middle of a math lesson and then I'm like, oh, I forgot about these clothes in the washing machine. Let me go get these clothes out the washing machine <laughs> and put them in the dryer, you know. <laughs> Um, so it it's a lot. It's still, you know, gets a little crazy at times, but it's nothing like how it was in the beginning. But I say you just, you know, you just can't give up. And it's okay to try, you know, different things to see how they work for you and your family. You know, mm. like what works for one family, you know, isn't going to work for the other. But sure. if I recommend everybody homeschool their kids, you know, but that that's just me. But you just you just have to keep trying and keep trying and set up new ways until you find what works for you and your family. Mm. You know what's interesting? Currently, we're in this little uh, not to date us, but we're in that phase of the quarantine and you know social distancing. And I see a lot of people <laughs> who have trouble maintaining the household with everyone home. You know, yep. It and it <laughs> makes me kind of think you know, how much things can change in an instant, you know, so you have to kind of be well-rounded. You know, I, it's true, I've never taught anything, but you kind of have a leg up in this because this is business as usual for yeah. you. You know, this is nothing new. So I, I think it is, you know, where people would kind of shun the idea of homeschooling. I think this is showing people that uh, it's possible. In some cases, you may have to do it. Yes. Don't, don't leave a job to someone else that you could potentially have to do one day right and I know a lot of people are going crazy yes, right now with I didn't want to say it but yes they are <laughs> but I like it I like that people are being forced to stay home with their kids mm -hmm. I like that people are being forced to stay home with their loved ones you know you're not running around here and there and doing this and doing that like you don't have no choice but to sit down and be with your kids fact mm. Makes you wonder how much technology has really gotten us away from each other. Yes. Mm. How distant are we as a family? Very. You know? mm. <laughs> Goodness. And I said it's it's much needed, and it like it hurts me to see how people are going crazy and panicking. You know, and I'm like, don't panic. It's okay. It's okay. This ain't nothing new. You That's know, like maybe saying. maybe I don't remember a couple of years ago we went through this with Ebola. You know, we done been through this with West Nile virus. Zika. We done been through this with the Zika virus. <laughs> you know, like just like a month or two ago, people was panicking about World War Three. Yes. You know, now all of a sudden it's it's this virus, and I'm like, it's okay, don't panic. This yeah. too shall pass. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> To throw that back at them. Yeah. I feel throw that. that back at them. This too shall pass. Uh, and and I've, I had this conversation with circles of people, and they just don't understand how I'm not freaking out. And I literally did what you just did. I rattled off everything I experienced. And yeah. what's funny is I, I appreciate the unity, but I also understand how vain the unity is. This unity that people are having and respect that people are having for your fellow human it's only going to last until this is over. Yeah. Then it's back to normal. Then the disrespect comes back in and the distancing. And no, the, let me stop you right there. Let's do it. On that disrespect, because this, that's another thing. This, this is just my personal opinion, okay. you know, but this is what I firmly believe in, that what's happening right now is a lesson for us all so we can learn how not to be disrespectful mm -hmm. and hateful and mean and all of those bad things you know like I feel like this is our time to really get ourselves together really focus on what's right and what isn't right you know there's no excuse now all the things you want to do when you couldn't because you had to go to work and you had to do this and you had to do that ain't no excuse now if that's what you want to do sit down and do it you ain't got nothing but time on your hands. That's fact. Make it happen. Um, another thing I'm, I'm glad about this current situation, this pandemic that people are calling it. You know, a lot of people are panicking because of the fear, you know. But I feel like it is 
a time for healing, a time for healing for us all. Because once we heal, the earth will heal. We all know the mm. earth is sick. The earth is toxic. Mm. That's why there's so much hate and killing and child pedophilia and all of this horrible things going on. Um, you know, air pollution and all the nasty stuff in our oceans, you know. But just think if for a minute everybody got to sit their ass down. The whole world. Sit your ass down. <laughs> you know, it's like the earth, our mother. You know, people, a lot of people don't even give her that credit. That's correct. You know, we have, most of us haven't been taught to even acknowledge the Mother Earth. They'll teach you about Father God, but they don't teach you about Mother Earth. You know, and it's like, she didn't had enough of our bullshit, you know, and mm. she's like, you gonna respect me, so you gonna sit your ass down, <laughs> you gonna get your mind right. Right. So, when you do come back outside, you know how to act. We're in time out. In time out. Mm. That that's how I feel. That's that's I wish more people would think of it like that. It would be less panic and fear. Yeah, we've been we've been showing our ass. Yeah, They're like all right, go to your room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm. I like that outlook. I like that outlook. All right. So another question. This this is one of my random questions. I like to throw these in to kind of keep people on their toes. Was there? Any and I understand that, you know, everyone has a different background. Is there any relative besides your sister that really kind of challenged you to think differently? Because we talked about how we like to think outside the box. For me, it was my aunt. My aunt was a teacher, went to college, but she had thousands of books and she would just challenge me with thoughts. Did you ever have anyone in your life that you could just bounce things off of back and forth? No. And I'm saying I was raised a Jehovah Witness. Wow. You, you don't do nothing. You don't do nothing. You don't say nothing. You don't question nothing. You know, it's like, but all the people that I was with, it's like I was the only one that still had questions. Everybody else was like, just okay, you know, with how things were. But I've always had questions and I would get told, you can't ask that. Well, why not? I want to know, you know, you mm -hmm. can't say that. But no one ever told me why I couldn't ask that or mm. why I couldn't say that. And it's like, now that I'm grown, I love when the whole witness come knock on my door. I'm like, come in. Yes, have a seat. You want some water? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like most people, they're like, ignore the door, you know, when mm. the whole witness come. But I'd be ready for them to come because I got a lot of questions to ask them. And cause can't nobody tell me to shut up no more. Can't nobody tell me I can't ask that cause I'm grown and this is my house and you gonna hear my questions, right. you know? Um, and so many of them, they're like, they, they still can't answer my questions. They don't know. They tell me they gonna have to get back. They gotta get back with me on that as I mm. hear that so much. I'm gonna do some research on that and I'm gonna get back with you. Please do, feel free, come back. We'll talk about this some more. Their sword wasn't sharp. That's what my yeah. uncle used to say. Exactly. Mm. That happens so many times. Huh. Okay. 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 So, going to that concept, you, you mentioned being a Jehovah Witness. Um, and I'll probably have to cut this out because I'm going to get real specific. <laughs> but um, my uh, aunt was a Jehovah Witness and I used to stay with them. Not the aunt that used to challenge me with questions. This is a different aunt. Um, but I used to stay with them in New Orleans every summer, and they were Jehovah's Witnesses. And I grew up apostolic, which is two totally different ends of the spectrum. But the way black parents can be sometimes, if you're going to church, you're going to church. That's all that matters, whatever. But um, I didn't understand a lot of things, and I had questions. you know. And, it, and that was the first time where I learned to challenge myself and think for myself and not just go by somebody else's interpretation on spirituality. Um, so I kind of thank Jehovah's Witnesses and Kingdom Hall for that because it taught me that not everything is as concrete as I thought it was because, yeah. again, I'm going by something someone interpreted. People just take, take it for granted, I feel. They're just, I don't know, they're just so gullible i guess you know like somebody tell you something and you're just like okay 
You know, like no one is asking why. That goes into the social media aspect of today as well. How many articles and things people read for two seconds and they repost without sharing it. Uh, a prime example is like when someone passes away, people uh, share a picture of someone who died and it turns out they died like five years ago. <laughs> or an article that they read and it turns out it's a satirical article, it's not real. I just, it's, it's alarming the lack of research. It's, it's absolutely alarming. So many of us have gotten lazy. Yeah. Like, I need that to change. Like we got to get, we got to get back into how our ancestors used to live. Mm. You know, our ancestors were not lazy. Like they grew all their own food they harvested land, they made things. They didn't just sit up and scroll on their phone and just have stuff <laughs> given to them. Right. You know, they they did all their own research, you know, like it ain't it isn't like how we are. Mm. And I'm I'm all for the ancestors. All honor and praise percent. to the ancestors, Man. you know. I make like some people get up every day and thank God. Every some people get up every day and thank Jesus, you know. Every day I get up, I thank the universe. You know, the universe is all of this. Mm -hmm. And I thank the ancestors. And that's what I teach my kids that too. Mm. Okay. Let me uh, transition back to a little bit of what you do with, you know, tarot readings. Um, how did that come to be? How did you start? Um, I just had a, a fascination with them. Like I've always, in the beginning I wondered like, you know, what is that? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't I didn't know anything about it. No one ever told me anything about tarot cards, but I seen them and I just something just was pulling me to it, you know. So I started reading up a little bit, you know, on tarot cards and and what they are, what what do they mean? And then I had got a few tarot card readings for myself. Um and I just I just loved everything about it. I love the the energy you know that that's put into it mm. um i really don't know how to explain it for real. it was just like it's part of me you know it's like we it's like we used to know each other and forgot or something <laughs> you know it's like mm. i've always just been drawn to it like i said when i first seen some tarot i didn't know what it was but it's like i don't know what this is but i like it and i want it in my life you know <laughs> it's right. like and it's like some of the things that I started reading about, it's like, I like, I kind of knew this, but I didn't, you know, cause I, I, I was never taught or raised up like this, but yet it's like reading some of the stuff that felt familiar to me. It's like, like a deja vu type thing, mm. you know, like I remember this, but I don't remember it, you know? No, you no, I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a come back to that in just a second. I want you to continue. Um, so yeah, like I said, and after that, I got some tarot card readings and I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. And so I just started doing them on myself, you know, to see how it worked and they would be accurate, you know? So then I started doing them on my husband, my closest friends, my mom, my sister, you know, like, I'm like, Lolly, y'all, let me give you a tarot card reading. Let's see how this goes. And everybody was like, oh my god like you're really good at this you know so and like i said um i was another tarot card reader that's on youtube she was she told me I, i've never met her before you know i just talk to her on youtube sometimes you know and she had called out my name mulatto queen and she was like you supposed to be doing this do what you're supposed to be doing. Just like I'm doing, you know, doing these tarot card readings, doing private readings, doing them on YouTube. This is what you're supposed to be doing. And at first I was like, I don't know about this. You know, I had never thought about getting a YouTube channel. That had never been a, a thing of, you know, something that I had wanted to do. Mm. But once she said that, it was like, hmm maybe it is what i'm supposed to be doing you know and mm. it's like and once i started it people are just coming to me and they're like hey i heard you do tarot card readings or i seen on your pages you do tarot card readings you know can you give me one 
and I've given, you know, I give them for free sometimes, like I don't always charge, you know, um, but everyone is like, oh my God, that's so accurate, you know, and they're like, do you need to know anything? Nope, like I just, I will call you like either on Instagram or Facebook, you know, through the video chat, so you can see mm-hmm. the cars that I'm working with. I'll ask you your name while we're on the phone, and that's it, you know, and I do your tarot card reading and I tell you, the energy that I get from these cards, like give you your message that you're supposed to get from these cards and everybody's like, oh my God, like that, that's so accurate. Like that's, or that's the confirmation I needed. You know, it's like, it's magical, you know? Mm. It's very interesting. I love doing it. It's like one of the best decisions that I've made, you know? And like, I never would have thought that, like I'm gonna grow up and be a tarot card reader, you mm. know? But it's like, It's just amazing. It fills me with so much joy to do it, to help these people. And it's easy. You know, it isn't no hard work, you know, like. It's not work to you. It's not stressful. Right. You know, I'm just doing what I love to do. 